شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم اليسر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It is our belief with regard to the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم that they have all been promised goodness by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَكُلَّوْ وَعْدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَةِ Allah is eternally pleased with them. There may have been certain circumstances that came about in their life where they committed certain sins. But in the end, Allah is pleased with all of them and that they all had made tawbah. In fact, it was in the divine wisdom that Allah had created scenarios in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where his companions did certain things and later on for us, there would be numerous lessons that we could draw from that. The last portion of Surah Tawbah is dedicated to focusing on the expedition of Tabuk, which was an expedition that Nabi Wasallam had undertaken from Medina to Munawwara to the doorstep of the Levant, which is Sham. And there was a few Sahaba, Ka'b bin Malik, Hilal bin Umayyah, and Murara bin Rabi'ah, Three of them who were genuine Sahaba, but they had remained behind from this expedition with no valid excuse. Anyway, what had happened was that Nabi Wasallam had announced that he was going on this journey. There were many Sahaba at that time. Most of them prepared. There were Munafikin who stayed behind and these three Sahaba also stayed behind. Nabi Wasallam went. There was no battle that ensued. It was supposed to be against the Romans. Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu anhu says that I realized my mistake. I was delaying in joining until it was too late for me and eventually time had elapsed and Nabi Sallallahu was already coming back. And as he was coming back, I started to think in my mind that maybe I can tell him this, maybe I'll tell him that. And he says I was a very eloquent person, I had the gift of the gab and I thought that I'll be able to say something and get myself out of the trouble. Eventually when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi did come back and Kaab radiallahu anhu went to present himself to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at that time he says all this batil, all this falsehood came away from my heart and I realized that I need to speak the truth. So he sat down in front of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said that oh Nabi of Allah, if I was sitting in front of any of the kings of this world, I would have been able to get myself out of this predicament with my eloquence and my ability to speak. Yet, I know that if I speak a lie today, I may save face now, but eventually Allah will expose me. I have no excuse for staying behind. Before this, Nabi Sallallahu had accepted the excuses of all the munafiqeen on face value. And when Kaab had come and said these words, Nabi Sallallahu said, Amma hadha faqad sadaq. This person has spoken the truth. Go away from here until Allah decides in your matter. Nabi Sallallahu then establishes an indefinite social boycott against these three Sahaba. No one is to greet them, no one is to speak to them, no one is to interact with them. And they are to remain like that. They continue to remain like that. Kaab radiallahu anhu says he was still a youngster. He would go to the masjid, he would perform salah, he would greet the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would look at his lips to see if he was replying. There was no reply. You'd walk around in the marketplace of Medina, not a person would greet him. This was all part of the social boycott that continued. While he was in this condition, the king of Ghassan sends a letter, and in the letter it's written that, O Kaab, we've heard that your companion has treated you very badly, why don't you come and join us? Kaab radiallahu takes this letter and he puts it in the fire immediately, and he says, this is a further test from Allah. Forty days passed, and at that time, Nabi Sallallahu then gives instruction, now separate from your wives. He asked, that, am I to divorce her? And Nabi Sallallahu says, no, just separate from her. 
time continues until it's becoming really difficult from him now, frustrated. Allah says, وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَلْجَأَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ That the life had become really constrained. The whole world was changed for them. It was a different place altogether. One day he is going uh, in the marketplace, eventually he ends up by his own cousin's house, Abu Qatada. He wants to go and speak to him, but he's not able to. He jumps over the wall and he comes in front of Abu Qatada and he greets him. And Abu Qatada doesn't even return the greeting. His own blood cousin. And he says, oh Abu Qatada, you know, you know that I love the messenger. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can bear testimony to this. You know me from before. And Abu Qatada says, Allah and his messenger knows best. I can't comment. He says, I turned away while tears were dripping from my eyes. It was so difficult. Eventually, 50 days passed. And on the 50th day, he says, I was sitting on the roof of my home. And at that time, I heard an announcement being made. The announcement was called out, Abshir Ya Kab. Glad tidings, O Kab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your tawbah. What had happened? It was after the Fajr Salah when Nabi Sallallahu was informed of the acceptance of the Tawbah of Kaab. And the Sahaba were with Nabi Sallallahu And look at the, the spirit of the Sahaba. That at that moment, one Sahabi jumps on his horse and he gallops off in the direction of Kaab while others go to the other two companions. Another says that, you know, by the time the horse reaches him, it would be too long. I'll go to the closest mountain and shout out from there. Maybe in that way the good news will reach him quicker. The good news will reach him quicker. And the news reaches him. Immediately he falls down in sujood before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says that as I then returned coming to the masjid, I met the sahaba in droves and they were all greeting me and they were congratulating me and they were all sharing in my joy on the acceptance of the tawbah. When I came into the masjid, I seen Nabi Sallallahu His face was radiant, his face was shining and he told Kaab that this is the best day after the day that you accepted the deen of Islam. And he asked, is this from your side? Oh, Nabi of Allah, is this from Allah? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, your tawbah has come down from the heavens. The acceptance has been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verses of the Noble Quran. At this instance, Kaab radiallahu anhu then says to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the thing that saved me this time is that I spoke the truth to you. I didn't try to deceive you. I didn't lie to you. And... I now take it upon myself that I will never speak a lie for the remaining part of my existence. Sometimes we speak lies to get ourselves out of trouble. Whatever the trouble is. And sometimes people talk lies to entertain and to amuse people. Kaab radiallahu anhu says, I will never speak a lie for the remaining part of my existence. And he then gave some things in sadaqah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi told him to keep some behind. Uh, this was such a joyous occasion that we see that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who on the instruction of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi never spoke a word to him. This was the dedication that here's a man, he's from amongst you, the messenger is instructed, don't speak to him. The Sahaba was so dedicated that they wouldn't utter a word. And then when the news and the glad tidings come down that now he's forgiven, they all there waiting to share in his joy. We can't share in the joy of our fellow brothers. We feel jealous. Why him? Why not me? I'm more worthy. I have greater talent. You know, it should have rather come my way. Uh, We have these feelings in our heart. That's why we can't share in the joy of others. Look at the test that Kaab radiallahu anhu endured. At that time, when Nabi Sallallahu imposed an indefinite boycott, but yet the love was so much that they did not for a moment consider that, you know what, I don't need this person. Let me go my own way. You know, that's what we say. If the ustad is strict with the student, and then now we'll go to another madrasa. I don't, we don't need this teacher. They remained steadfast, and that was their love for Nabi Wasallam. When the test came, when the letter from Hassan came, again, there may have been a temptation, and sometimes so often we are tempted by money, or we are tempted that just do this, it may be underhand activity, and you'll get this big amount. And we think of the other needs that we have, 
and maybe I'll just do this one deal and then I can continue, I'll make Toba. When the temptation is there, that is the time to stand firm with whatever your circumstances. So there are numerous lessons and it is for this reason that Allah had brought about these circumstances in the lives of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu so that later on we can look back and reflect on the lessons. May Allah give us the understanding. We move to the next verse. Allah instructs us and He says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma as-sadiqeen. O you who believe, fear Allah and be with the truthful ones. Who are we told to be with? We are being instructed to be with the pious friends of Allah, to be in their company. Allah refers to them as the truthful ones because they are the ones who their life is transparent, they are true to their word, and they are the true friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Allah has given us this instruction indicates to us that till Qiyamah, there will always be pious people within our midst who we can link up to, who we can associate with, and we can sit in the company and benefit from them. And the fact of the matter is that by being in the company of the pious, it has a tremendous effect on our heart, increasing our love for Allah and diminishing and decreasing our love for this world. That is the fruit and that is the benefit of sitting in the company of the pious. Company of good people is very, very important. The companions, they were not called assistants or supporters or followers. They were called sahaba, which means companions because they were in the suhbah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa So it is through suhbah and through companionship that this deen has passed on. And therefore, we need to at all times ensure that we are in good company and that we associate with people who are noble and pious. And this will have an immense impact on us improving and advancing in our spirituality and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about man's nature. That we are such. وَإِذَا مَسَّتْهُمُ الضَّرَّاءِ Allah says that when difficulty comes upon man, then da'ahu, a man calls out to Allah. He calls out while lying down, while standing, while sitting. At every moment, at every instant, he makes dua. He makes very fervent dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says that the moment the difficulty is removed, and alleviate it, then he walks around as though nothing had happened ever. As though nothing had happened. Like he never called out to Allah, and that like as though Allah never assisted him. We call out to Allah at times of difficulty, and then we want our du'as to be accepted. The poet says, نَحْنُ نَدْعُ الْإِلَاهَ إِنْدَ كُلِّ كَرْبٍ ثُمَّ نَنْسَاهُ إِنْدَ كَشْفِ الْكُرُوبِ كَيْفَ نَرْجُ إِجَابَةً لِدُعَاءٍ قَدْ سَرَدْنَا طَرِيقَهُ بِالذُّنُوبِ We call out to Allah at times of difficulty, and then we forget Him at the times of ease. How do we expect our du'as to be accepted when we are blocking the path to the acceptance with our own sins? So if we would like our du'as to be accepted under all circumstances, then the hadith says, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَسْتَجِيبَهُ اللَّهُ إِنَّ الشَّدَائِدِ والكرب that whoever likes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his du'as at the time of difficulty and hardship, then فَالْيُكْثِرُ الدُّعَاءِ in the rakha, Then he should make abundance of du'a at times of goodness. So remember Allah at times of goodness, at times of prosperity, and then when you are in difficult circumstances, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then accept your du'as. There are two circumstances which are a test to man. When there are abundance of wealth, that is when we forget Allah. Because we don't need Allah. Everything is going well. We don't need to turn to anyone. And at a time of extreme poverty, that is when we are destitute and we are willing to explore all avenues and we are even willing to forego our principles and we end up falling in haram. So extreme prosperity as well as extreme poverty becomes a test. And it is for us to remain balanced under all circumstances, to establish a continuous relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us a strong relationship with Him.